one. Hello, Cam and Zion. I am uh, waiting for Zion to come on. I know Cam can't be with us today, but I prepared a lesson for you guys that is a follow-on lesson in an area of mathematics called combinatorics. Why don't you guys repeat that? Combinatorics, combinatorics. And what it is, it's an organized way of counting, okay? So remember, we started last week um, during our exploration of Kakuro, looking for restricted sets. So you know that when we had two digits and they had to sum to a certain number, there were restricted sets. So we might have looked at, let's think of what numbers had the least, the, the biggest restrictions, okay? And if you remember when the sum or the clue was three, four, 16, and 17. Here, the numbers one through nine, there were only two ways to create that sum. So we call that a combination. So the obvious one first is that three is the sum of one and two. So these are the combinations. Now let's move these numbers down a little bit. But there's another word that's really important for today's lesson, and that is permutations. Okay? And permutations actually care about the order. So one, two is the same as two, one, but they are considered two different permutations. So we can look there and we can go, okay, there are exactly two permutations for the one combination of one, two. Now let's go see, why don't we pause that? Oh, I think he's coming. Hey, Zion. How you doing, buddy? Good, fine, thank you, we're good. Great, great, great. So just so you know, um, I've already started recording and right at 2.30, about four minutes ago, I started making a, uh, an introduction because I know that Cam is gonna watch this later um, because he couldn't be here today. So know, yeah. let me tell you everything that I just said, but in a little different way so Cam can hear it again. Today's lesson is, a, is an area of mathematics called combinatorics. Can you say combinatorics? Combinatorics. That was beautifully said. And it's really a special way, Zion, of counting. It literally teaches us okay. different ways to count. Now, you, you think of counting as one, two, three, four. Not at all. Counting using combinometrics is very different. It's used, just so you know, I don't know if you're interested in certain areas of science, but it's used in- I love science. Well, have you ever heard, do, do you know what physics is? Laws of physics? Yes. So- Force motion? Combinatorics is used in physics. It's used in biology. It's used in computer science. So when, when anybody's trying to come up with security codes and ways to code computers, combinatorics are used. Now, do you remember last week we worked on these restricted sets where we had um, 
he had the numbers three, four, 16, and 17, and they only had one combination. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Now, are those your glasses or is that a virtual thing? Oh, it's not virtual. Um, oh, that's I'm seriously wearing it. Beautiful. I love them. I love them. So I'm I'm actually looking for Thank you now. So I'm I might I might look at those. I like that. So what I want to say is you remember that one, two was the only combination to add up to three with two digits. But of course, there's something called permutations. Can you say permutations? Permutations. So permutations are when the order matters. So one, two is actually considered different than two, one. And therefore the one combination of one, two has two permutations. What is the one combination for four? And remember, we're only using the numbers one through nine. Okay, there is two and two. Well, remember, three. remember, we're not allowed to repeat digits in this uh, oh. exercise. But I you think we did this at school, but um, let's go use um, three and one. That's right. And I like combinatoric mathematicians like to do everything in order. So order means from left to right, top down, least to greatest. Okay, you ready? Give me the two mm -hmm. permutations for four, please. Um, so one, one and three, three one. and or three and one and three and one. Three Absolutely. And one. So again, that also oh, they turn it's a turnaround fact. That's right. Now, can you give me the fact for 17? Do you remember that one? Yeah, nine plus eight. Oh man, Zion, you are something else, buddy. I am very, very impressed. And of course the permutations are? Eight and nine. Equal. And, and, and. Oh, nine, eight. Nine and nine, eight. eight. Excellent. And finally, 16. Oh, um, nine and seven. Nice. Now remember, combinatoric mathematicians go from left to right, lowest to highest. So seven to nine. Can you say that? Seven, nine. And the permutations seven, nine. are? And the permutations are? Nine and seven. Well, nine and seven is the second one, the first one being seven, nine. So you always want to go in order from least to greatest. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Go in order. Oh, like you're greatest. going from, so can I? Okay, you can say anything. Okay. Yeah, go for it, buddy. Go for it. So do Thank you, you. Do, um, so do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to ask you a challenge question now. If three and four and 16 and 17 have the most restrictions and the fewest combinations, only one combination, what numbers, and remember, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put three and four over here and I'm gonna put 16 and 17 over here. What number do you think has the most combinations, which is the number you would never choose if you were doing Kakuru. What would be that sweet spot right in here? What do you think that number would be? Now, I would pick up my pencil right now. A combinatoric mathematician always looks for something called medians. Medians are middle numbers. So do you think you could find that sweet median number okay um.
So what do you think, big guy? And I've already, I've also written out the numbers so that may help you find the median number. So throw it out there, Zion. What do you think? What do you think is the median number, the middle number between those two numbers, three and four, 16 and 17? Um, I think the median number um, would be, and I forgive my mistake. Um, What do you think, buddy? Give me a number. Give me a number. It doesn't have to be right, but you have to give it a shot. Um, like, Take a risk. Throw out a number. Then we'll test it. 11. 11. Okay. Now, let's put a little square around 11. And, Zion, I want to look at how many numbers, Zion, look at the screen, please. How many numbers, Zion, are to the right of 11 in between? And how many numbers are to the left in between? Um, four so is four on, the, right. on the first side. And um, six in the um, left. Now, do you still think 11? is the median number. Wh what number do you think is the median number? Now that you know that there are four numbers on the right, but six numbers on the left, what is logical to be that middle number? Ten, because there's gonna be the same on each side. So the median number is 10 because 10 has how many numbers to the left and how many numbers to the right? It ha 10 on the right has um, um, five and then on the left, it has um, five. That's right, and that's how you know that you found the middle number, the median. Now, I don't know if this is true. We're gonna have to test it. We're gonna now look for all of the combinations for 10 with two digits. Now, remember, a combinatoric mathematician, Zion, he always goes with the smallest number and the highest number first. Go. Okay. Um, um, four and six. Do you think four is the smallest number that can be used to make 10? You are right. Four the and smallest, six. The one and nine. Right, one and nine. That's how combinatoric mathematicians think. They go in order. What's the next one? Um, eight and two. Do you think I want to put an eight here and a two here? Does that seem two logical? and eight? Right, smallest to biggest, left to right, two and eight. Keep going. It's like the It's like it's kind of like similar to the puzzle that we did. There's like a rule you have to follow. Yes, that's. It's called an algorithm, Zion. Algorithms are there to help us stay in and and really understand things. Okay, give me the give me the next one. Three and seven. Yes. Keep going. And then um four and six. And my friend. And then after the four, six is 
um, um, four plus six. Okay. Three and seven. Wow. Did you already choose three and seven? Oh, no, no, no. no sorry. Yeah. Yes. Five and so five. When, once you know that you hit five and five and you know you can't use the same digits, you know that you're done. Now, Zion, you found four combinations for 10, but how many permutations? How many total permutations? Remember, each combination of two numbers has two permutations. So how many permutations? What's the permutations again? Remember, let's look at it. For the combination one, two, there were two permutations. One, two, oh. two, one. Okay. Um, there's also there could be two um, permutations for the um for the other ones on the other page, but it just won't work. Yeah, but so one and nine, nine and one, two and eight, and eight and two. Three and eight, eight and two, seven, seven and three, and four, four, six How and four, six total. and six. How many total permutations? If there's four combinations, what's the total number of permutations? Um, eight. That is correct. Now, Zion, you just did your first job in combinant torax. Now, I want to point out to you in the next challenge that we also look at three digit restricted sets. And if you remember the numbers that were restricted for three digits, do you remember what was the smallest number that we could use with three digits? Remember, we're always using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you cannot repeat digits. What was the smallest clue with three digits? Um, two and... Well, you have to give me the sum. The sum. It adds up to what? These three numbers will add up to what number? What's the smallest sum that it can be? Um, 10. Well, do you think, like, what are the three smallest numbers that we are allowed to use? One, two, and three. And if you add one, two, and three, do you get 10? No, you get six right so six is the first one the smallest what's the next smallest four five and six uh-uh that is not the next smallest because if you oh. choose, wait a minute hold on don't don't take my word for it let's look at four five and six you always want to challenge everyone in mathematics so you understand it what is four plus five plus six Okay, 15. And can we not do 15 with three, five, and seven? And two, five, and eight, and one, five, and nine? So doesn't 15 have many, many different combinations? So a combinatoric mathematician, he will look at this and say, wait a minute. I want the smallest numbers possible. One, two, but I can't use three again, so I would use the next number, which is? Four. And that adds up to? Seven. Exactly. Now, when we go to this number here, we go to the highest number. What's the biggest number that has a restricted set? Um, okay. Five, six, and it seven. 
is R5, 6, and 7, the largest numbers we can use. They're kind of in the middle there, aren't they? You know yeah. there's bigger, there's a set of three bigger numbers that we can use. Oh, yes. It's seven, eight, and nine. Of course. And seven, eight, and nine have a sum of what? And um, just, by the way, Zion, a combinatoric mathematician doesn't add seven plus eight plus nine. He looks at eight and says, wait a minute, seven is one less, nine is one more. So it's really three eights. It's really three eights. Okay. Is it equal to 24? You are the man. Zion, you are the man. Now, Zion, work backwards now. Instead of working forwards from one, two, and then four, what's the one going to be right below this? It's going to have a what? Um, um, five and six. No, because... don't, don't, don't go to five. Think of the biggest numbers you had but now we can't use seven again so we have to use but let me see six of course because that's one less so therefore now you don't have to add that up at all because you if 24 is seven eight and nine then what number is six eight and nine three because it's just one more less than seven well, it's one, it's one less than seven is six, and therefore, what's one less than 24? 23. Right. Now, you get to find the median number again. So here's your job. You got six and seven and 23 and 24. Now, your job is to find that sweet spot in the middle. Now, while you're thinking about this, I'm going to write all the numbers out. Eight, nine. And I want you to use the same combinatoric thinking. Oh, you know what? As I was writing, I realized that I didn't plan well because my numbers are actually too big. So what I'm going to do, Zion, is I'm even going to make this page wider. And it's really going to help me out. So I want you to start using your combinatorics, thinking of that median number, the middle number. All right, I've got them all. Sometimes, Zion, I count from both ends to the middle. I count from both ends. It's kind of a fun thing to do. I know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know it. It's 15. Zion. I am so proud of you, buddy. You found it. You found it. This number should have the most combinations for sets of three digits. Now, of course, you know what I'm going to ask you. Let's do it, my friend. Always, and by the way, I always like to write out my nine digits. It's always my best practice to write the things that I have to think about. Now, remember, always start with the smallest number and the highest number. Remember, we need three digits here. Go. So what's the smallest number that we have available to us? One, two, and three. No, no, no. Hold on. The smallest number is one. Yeah. What is the largest digit we have available to us? Nine. 
So you put down a one <laughs> sign and you separate them. Now you have to just fill in that middle number. Five. Now, a combinatoric mathematician will now go with one and have to say, wait a minute, let's go down one from nine. And what would we get? Eight. So we might have to use a six. We might have to replace the five for a six. Absolutely. Now, are we allowed to use one in the first place again? Is there another combination? No. That's nice because Two. You, know, you know that that one is no good, is no good. So we now move to two. That's what we do. Two and one. Mm -hmm. On your... Yeah, because eight plus two, eight um, plus two is equal oh, no, to. No, no, no. Always the biggest, smallest and the biggest. So two and. Two and nine. And now your number in the middle is? Four. Right. And what's your next one? Um, let's see. Three. Uh, uh, uh. Come on. You have oh. to use all the twos that you can. So you, you throw down okay. a two and you say, let's go one mm -hmm. less than nine. Eight. Eight. And one more than four. Five. What's the next one? I'm going to let you do it. I'm not going to give you any help on this one. Two. I heard you say two. Oh, um, and Look. then I said, but after that I said three, but um, I don't think that would work because we don't have any 10. We start with nine and then move to eight. What do you think we want to move to next? Always um, one down, one down. Seven. Of course, and then? Seven. And then? Okay, um, we'll do six. Of course. Now we're done with the twos. Come on, we've got two minutes. We can do this. Okay, um, I want three. Okay, let's go put them um, six. Three and what? Three and nine. Right. And then I'd add, no, we can't do that. Okay. I don't think we can do the three because um, right. right, because you can't have two threes. So three yeah. and nine don't work, but I bet three and eight will work. It will work. And what does that become? Okay. We need a we need a four in the middle. Absolutely. Come on. I need okay, to the next one. Let me see. It's three. Okay, three. Let's go try seven, and then there would be a five. But we can't use but, three, six, and six, so you have to move to the what? Three, five, seven. You have to move to four, and remember, if you use, let's just think about it. And six and then and you know what's fun five. about this one absolutely absolutely I, zion you did it yourself oh my gosh you found yep. all eight combinations and next week i am going to teach you how many permutations these numbers would have 15 has an unbelievable number of per mu patience it has 48 but i'm going to teach you how to calculate that next week you were awesome a lot of fun as always i am going to export this pdf to you right now and of course once i get the uh, video uh i will send that up to your dad as well and to you and today yeah. is
two, five. You're welcome. I hope you have a wonderful week, buddy. Have fun with combinatorics. You too. Bye, Thank buddy. you. I, I always do. See ya. Yeah. Bye.